Hi guys, what's going on? This is Chris Beamer with IPGRentals.com and today we're gonna to talk about the Sound Devices 633. Let's check it out. Okay, so what I have in front of me is the Sound Device 633. This is a small package right here, but it packs a heck of a punch. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing over right here. Uh, I'm actually plugged in right here because what you're hearing is actually me going through this mixer and that will be uh, a good thing for you to see uh, coming up here. But you can see we have three XLR inputs and one is for AES digital audio. And then you have four, five, and six TA3 connections. So you can have up to six inputs going on right here. And then you can have a, a X3 and X4 output here. There's an X1 and X2 on the other side. We'll go into that in one second. And then you can see this is for six AA batteries and this thing eats through batteries. So I would definitely suggest having an external battery source coming in. So I'm gonna do a little flip right here and I'm gonna show you the back of this as well. A really cool feature is this. You can put NP batteries on the back of this that you would power a lot of things inside of your arsenal. And so this is another, yet another way uh, to power this mixer. And then, if you can believe it, there's a third way to power the mixer. You can go through a, uh, a DC input right here on the side. We have something called the BDS system inside of our mixer and it's a, it's a little routing hub for uh, receivers, for powering the mixer itself. So that's fantastic, I would definitely suggest that. So let's take a look at what we got back here. Contrary to the 664, you have an XLR left and right and you also have a return uh, eighth inch uh, jack inside there as well. Um, so on the 664, you actually have the Hiroshi cable, which is 10 pin cable. Um, so it actually all is encompassed in there. The return is encompassed and the two channels. On this one, uh, you actually have to physically plug in the two XLR left and right. Um, you have a, a quarter inch headphone input right here. You have the timecode uh, TA5 connector for running timecode, uh, jamming slates, stuff like that. Uh, you have an X1 and X2 TA3 input as well. So this is, it's again, it's a little smaller of a package um, for the output as well. Uh, however, it's extremely versatile still. And then we're gonna go to the front side of it here. And you can see I've already got some levels jumping because on channel one I have a lob which is sitting right here. And I have a boom on channel two, which is right there. So you can see those levels. Now, you have your PFL switch to take you into the menu options for this specific input. You have a left and a right uh, channel panner up here on the top. You have your fader for your main audio. And then you have a trim level here for your gain. And, and generally, most of the time, you're gonna use this as a three channel mixer. However, you do have the ability to take in up to six channels uh, using the TA3 inputs on there as well. And you can actually control that using these little faders as well. And to activate them, you'll hear a, an audible click. And when you do that, um, all you have to do is you go into, you see there's a one and a four, a two and a five, a three and a six. So whenever you wanna do one for a PFL, you go in here and then you can do it there. And if you wanna go into four, boom, right here. Now, where to the Ys, this is only a line input. Um, so that's very important to know. For, for our purposes, if we're gonna run uh, six channels, we'll use another mixer. Um, but it is, in case you're in a bind and you wanna do up to six channels, you can. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Um, so that kind of sums it up for uh, the physical fader area. So let's go ahead and move on to this physical window right here. You'll see there's a few wheels, a few jog wheels, a few uh, meter button, uh, a joystick right here. Maybe look a little complicated, it's quite, quite simple. So we'll go ahead and start at the top. This right here is how you're going to record. And I'm gonna go ahead and just actually push that jog wheel up. And you can see one of our last things we were doing was for Major League Baseball. Um, so right now, the Major League Baseball interview 15 is actually on there right now. So to start it, you're actually going to hit that button upwards. To stop it, you're gonna press straight in. And that right there is how you start your record and stop your record. If you want to hear it back, which I'm not going to actually do right now because it will play over the, uh, the recording right now, you actually just press this button straight down and that will show you your last clip. And then you can use the left and the right area of the joystick to, you hold it down to rewind or you press it to go backwards for clips. So that is the recording, the playing back, the fast forwarding, uh, and the stopping function. Now, another thing to do is if you want to see what your next take is going to be, you actually just push this straight in and you just hold it, 
And that actually says next right there, MLB interview number 16. And that lets you know what your next take is going to be. So then you just release that and boom, you're good. Um, let's go down here to the meters. Now you can actually change what your uh, level board looks like. Um, and for me, I, I kind of enjoy everything the same size. That's kind of just a personal thing. You know, if you're doing something where you only have your three channels, you want to see it bigger, you can see it that way. And if you just really want to see the left and the right big, but keep everything else going a little bit small, um, that's a way to do it. But I'm just going to go back here and just do our standard look. So let's just, uh, let's go down here to mic and tone. Tone is going to send out 1K tone. And I'll show you in the menu option, you can do a pulsating tone and you can do continuous. Um, Something really cool, though, that I really like about this is there's a little internal microphone, right? Say there's a moment when you're filming and maybe the AC doesn't get the slate out in time um, or somebody forgets the slate or there's no information for the editor to know in post exactly what that means. So what you can do is like an auditory slate. So I'm actually going to go down to this right here and you'll see the levels jump and you'll hear it. It's not the best microphone, but it'll actually say, you know, let the editor know. So you could say, uh, you know, uh, MLB interview, you know, uh, Jose Canseco, take one. Just in case, you know, the, the AC didn't get to it, that lets your editor know, oh, okay, boom, that's an auditory slate, that helps me a lot. And another thing that you can see, is there's a little jog wheel right here, that is going to be used in a lot of different capacities right here, but it's very important to know that I have uh, an SD and a CF card in here right now, and when you don't have one, these are all grayed out because it, it's, it can't record, it can't arm the track because there's nothing to record it to. However, I do have two cards in here and you see that the tracks are red, the left, right, X1, X2, all the way through one through three. So you can actually arm the tracks by pressing the meters and this little jog wheel at the same exact time. And you see that one grays out. Super important to know. If it is grayed out, it does not record. Do not forget that because you will find yourself in a world of hurt if, uh, if you do do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and arm that stinker right there. Uh, and that's that. So down here is the time code right here. Right now I have it on a free run. I'll go through that shortly to kind of show you how, how I got that there. So you see this right here, this return and favorite as well. So you can see that if I hit this over here, it'll go from return uh, to left and right stereo, and you can actually set it as a favorite to uh, to go back to without having to click, 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 click to find it. And then here's your uh, headphone volume knob right here, and you can see as I turn it that the numbers go up. And if you go in here, uh, you can actually just pick whichever source you want to select to listen to as well. The menu actually goes away pretty quick, so I'd select it pretty quick if I were you. And then the menu button is right here, which we'll kind of jump into the menu um, in just one second. The power button's at the top. You always have to have it on, obviously. Um, what's kind of important to know is that I would have a battery system inside here, like I would have uh, the double A's in here, because when you turn this mixer off, you can still see time code going by a little blue light that keeps popping up and up and down and up and down, and it lets you know time code is still retaining. If you have no battery system in there whatsoever, time code's just gonna uh, stop, so you don't wanna do that. So I would definitely have those batteries put in there as well. So we kind of just went through this whole, you know, situation around here. Let's uh, let's dive into the menu. So we're diving in. I'm going to press this menu button right here, and there it is, the, the from top to the very bottom. So let's go into power number one. So this is actually very cool because on the 664, you don't have this option to see what voltage your power's at. Uh, and you have all these options as far as B1, B2 for those two NP batteries on the bottom. You have your internal AA's and your external uh, source as well. And what's cool is you can see uh, when you go in here, as far as you can pick the style of battery, the kind of battery and power source. Now say my external source dies, there's, you can set this to a seamless power switch, which can save you so much. Uh, I, honestly, I don't even know why the shutdown option is in here because that would just be bad on all fronts, especially you know if you, if you lose track of it in your mind. So I have switch power source. So I think that's a very awesome little menu option there. So we're gonna go into inputs.
let's go one and two first, which is channel uh, one and two linking and five and six linking. I'm not a fan of linking channels. Um, I get that maybe you have something that's very similar source and instead of kind of going over to change the other one, you want to do it anyway. I wouldn't do it. Um, so when you have them linked, these faders will adjust two channels, not just one. Um, so you can do that for one and two and five and six. Phantom voltage, generally always 48 volts. I'm not sure what kind of obscure microphone you would use that would do 12 volts. So uh, 48 is 99.9% of the time, 100% of the time for me is the go is the go to. Uh, pre fade toggle mode. So there's six channel and there's three channel. Six channel is if you uh, if you actually go to the left here, you're going to do channel one, but if you go to the right, you're going to do channel four, and that'll come up inside of this menu area. If you have it on three channel, it doesn't matter which direction you put it in, left or right, uh, it's just going to stick on your channel one. So input and to ISO routing. Okay, let's talk about this. There are some times when you're going to want to do one or the other, okay? So for this instance right now, um, I don't have any kind of comm tech or anything for anybody to listen to. I'm not going in any X1 or X2 there's really no point in having a pre-fade on right now. And when you see pre-fade and post-fade, it means this, before the fader, after the fader. Pre-fade, before the fader, post-fade, after the fader. So when you are doing the post-fade, everything that comes out of this mixer, everything that you record internally is going to be uh, listening to your faders versus pre-fader, which is when you go into the ISO tracks one, two, three, it's only going to, it's not gonna actually kill it. If I were to turn this all the way to zero, you would still see levels jumping for, uh, for your one, two, and three ISO channels, and you can control that using the um, trim option. So here's an example when you would use uh, pre-fade versus post-fade. So say you're recording internally, um, and you have a camera that obviously you can only go in two channels, right? Um, they want the two channels, the, the two lobs, let's just say two lobs and a boom, they want the two lobs to be clean on a left and on a right. Okay, so the only problem is with three channels, how can you do that? So there is a way, and that's called prefade. And what that is, is I can actually set my levels, like my levels, do everything like that, and then I'll actually turn this, uh, the boom down all the way, and I'll still see the level bouncing inside of my record. So I'm actually going to be able to record that but it won't come through uh, on my channel one and two um, and ruin it uh, for, you know, if they wanna just, just hear the channel one and two. So that's a way, an instance, that I would use pre-fade versus post-fade. So the last thing on the menu uh, is the input delays, and you can set these up to um, 30 milliseconds. Inputting this is when you have a lot of inputs going on at once um, and you want to uh, try to spare the errors within the recording uh, to a card. I've never actually had to put them on uh, in my experience, so that's just kind of what I've what I've done a little bit of research on. So uh, that's it. So before we jump into uh, outputs, uh, we did change batteries here. Like I was saying before, the double A's get destroyed really quick on here, and you can see that I'm using the uh, MP batteries on the bottom side. I really love the versatility, so here's a fantastic example of that. All right, so let's go into outputs now, and you can see there's a lot of them, so let's just kind of go into them. As far as linking goes, you can jump into the linking, and you can actually link left and right, X1 and X2. You can see there's a comma in between each one, left and right, X1, X2, left, right, X1, X2. You can actually link up X1 and X2 to go up together, and left and right to go up together. Um, however, I like to have individually non-linked channels, again, like I was saying before, so I'm gonna go ahead and not link those up. Okay, XLR, left, right, TA3, X1, X2 out. You have the option to change it, line, uh, mic, you can do negative 10 or you can do AES digital audio as well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with line. And again, obviously, as, as a sound person, I sure uh, it's, it's pretty understood. You wanna match up your uh, levels going to the camera. And so we can kind of jump in here now. So AES, output routing. With AES, you can have up to two channels of audio per XLR output, uh, and you can actually see a nice complex table right here where you can send exactly what it is you want to send down that line um, and select it right here, whether it's you know uh, left or right, X1, X2, channels one through six, um, and you can also go X3 and X4. So you can put a lot. Uh, the readout's actually very 
very, not, it's complex, but it's, you can do exactly what you want to do on the AES output. Playback to outputs. So you have the option to do all outputs or headphones only. If you want to check something really quick without the client knowing or without you know camera guy having to hear it if he's monitoring your audio as well, you can go all outputs or you can go headphones only if you just want to hear it yourself. Um, you can route specifically like if you have an X1 uh, Comtech just where you're having the client listen to it um, and they only want to hear one of your channels, you can go ahead, boom, and route it right there. Say they only want to hear six, boom, you can route it right there. So we're only going to have them listen to six. Let's take away one. Let's take away two. Now again, you can see something very cool here. Pre-fade versus post-fade. They can hear it, uh, either they can hear it uh, before you start messing with the audio or after you start messing with it. So you can see on the bottom, post-fade is the blue, pre-fade is the green, and then when you click it and there's nothing, you're actually sending nothing. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn that on for one and two because that's kind of my go-to post-fade. And so we're gonna go ahead and back out of here. Same exact thing for the X3 and X4. And then output delays, just like we were talking about the input, you can uh, turn output delays on as well. Let's talk about limiters really quick. There's a soft and a hard knee compression or limiter. And so when you have a hard knee on, it's, it's a little more noticeable because when you hit that threshold, you'll immediately see that there's compression uh, laying onto it uh, and you can hear it versus a soft knee, which actually feathers the curve up like this. So it's a little less noticeable. Uh, and so I would definitely go soft knee versus hard knee. So you can see down here, you can set your threshold. Uh, it goes all the way down to four or up to 18. That's completely up to you what you want. Uh, 16 is the default and it has been actually pretty nice for me um, in my own professional opinion. So that's where I'm at. You can set it to wherever you want to go. Uh, you can do it for anything left or right, X1, X2. Um, you can turn your linking on and off. I would keep that off again. So that is limiters. All right, next thing is auto mixer. And this is uh, something that is new uh, in the 633. Uh, and it's a little bit crazy. Have you ever turned on an auto microphone on your camera? Very, very similar. Um, when somebody, if you have three channels of audio, one person is speaking at a time, the other two people that are silent, it will actually bring their level down. So ambient noise is not competing um, with whoever's speaking at that moment. So it does a pretty good job. Um, I typically don't, would not do this because I, I would more kind of want to trust myself. But if you get into a situation where you have a ton of lobs, um, you're a little overwhelmed, this actually does a pretty fantastic job. And you can actually set inputs as well um, for, uh, you know, if you just want to, maybe there's, there's two people, you know, on, on five and six that you kind of just, not that important that you, you want to focus on your one, two, three, and four. Um, you can go ahead and turn those on individually as well, which is fantastic. All right, recorder, let's get to the fun stuff. So you have a lot of options. This can dual record. And I can't tell you how important a dual recording is because I don't trust cards. Solid state cards um, at one period of time in your life will fail you. And having the ability to dual record something is just kind of gives me a little bit of peace of mind. So um, you can see right here that you can record exactly the same thing to the same card. Now, however, uh, it's, it's possible that you want to do two different things at once, which I'll give you an example. Um, we just had one of our guys go out on a shoot where um, they wanted it to be wave poly, but they also wanted uh, a simultaneous recording of an MP3. Um, so you can actually go in here and do MP3 left to right, and it was strictly for transcoding. So I'm actually recording on the CF card. I'm recording uh, wave poly, which is one track, multiple channels, and then the other one's gonna get the MP3 left and right for their transcoding purposes. So you're able to do two things at once. So you actually have a plethora of things that you can do just go down the list and whatever you need it for, you kind of set it up. So MP3 bitrate, obviously you can change that. Uh, the higher you are, the better quality you have. Sample rate, again. For dialog, 48 kilohertz is, is more than fine. You can start going up to a much higher sample rate, but that does start to limit you in some other areas. Pre-roll is another lifesaver on this mixer. Okay, so say you're out on a shoot, they all of a sudden decide to start recording without you. So you go ahead and hit record, but you feel like, oh man, I didn't get the slate. Pre-roll saves your life. 
when you're at 48 kilohertz, you can do up to six seconds of pre-roll. And so what that means is it's constantly recording six seconds. So the second you hit that record, it's gonna grab the previous six seconds that it was recording and it's going to tack it on to the very beginning of your clip itself. So that can save your life. Now, when you are messing with your kilohertz though, and you go to 192, you have only one second of pre-roll time. So important to know. And the only time I really do 192 kilohertz is when I'm recording the sounds of, of certain things for sound effects purposes that can also be slowed down quite a bit and retaining its fidelity as well. So I'm gonna go back to 48, and that's more than fine for uh, doing dialogue on 99% of, of things. Approved media list, super important. Do not put a card in here that has a transfer rate of something ridiculously slow, like 20 megabits per second, because if you do, you're gonna have a errors left and right. So you can take a picture of this QR code, it'll take you to the sound device's uh, approved media list, and yes, it'll be a little more expensive, but you're really not gonna have any kind of issues when it comes to your cards. So do not be cheap in that, because there is, uh, there's no substitute for not having the audio, because you went a little bit of sheep on the cards. So I would definitely, uh, I would definitely get the approved media. So let's go time code. Free run, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're gonna be on free run. However, you can change it to a bunch of things, record run, free run, auto, mute, auto, 24 hour run, uh, ex exterior time code, that's for you to receive it. 99% uh, of the time, you're going to be the one generating this time code. You really, it's kind of interesting for one camera to send it or for you to receive it from somewhere else because generally audio is the end all be all because we are the ones who put out the you know, lock boxes, we do the slate, uh, digital slate. So generally we're the, the authority in that. So generally free run is where I live. Frame rate, be sure to set your frame rate to the proper um, frame rate with the cameras because if you don't do that, then you're gonna mess up your time code completely. Frame rate, uh, you can go 23 to 30 frames. Um, a lot of sports says 59.94. You'll do 29.97, so you'll effectively you're gonna double that in a way. Um, and be sure that you select non-drop versus drop. Again, very important because the time code will drift over time if you're not set on that correctly. So let's just go 23.98, uh, which is what everybody here is set to right now. Um, Jam menu. This is kind of cool because if you are receiving, you can see receive time code versus your generator time code, so you can actually see the difference. Um, and you can see if they're sending you U bits, you can see exactly like uh, time, date, everything like that um, versus your generator U bits. Um, and again, I, I don't typically get it more as I, I give it out to, to cameras and and, uh, and the slate and stuff like that. It's just a way for you to kind of see if you want to see the difference. Um, but again, I, I typically doesn't happen too much. Okay, set generator time code, very, very easy. Uh, I'm not gonna do it right now because right now I have jammed these two cameras that are filming me right now and I don't want to redo that and have them go off of the uh, time code that I'm sending them. So I'm actually gonna back out of here and not do that. U-bits, stands for user bits. And what that is, is you plug into a slate and it will display time, date. You can actually set it up to how you wanna have it. And then at the very end, you can actually have it set to the uh, scene and the take number. Um, just for their references. So it helps an editor out quite a bit. And then display time mode, you can either do big time code or big A time code. And that is our time code menu. So let's jump into the file storage, the most fun and most complicated area. This system is a little counterintuitive. I wish it was a little bit easier. You can actually, through the wingman, um, you can have it on your phone and label stuff a little bit easier. Um, so let's just kind of jump into this immediately. I'm actually gonna start at the very bottom of this menu. You can erase and format your CF and SD card right there. Default playback card, obviously you can just do it CF or, or SD. Um, file playback mode, you can play all. Um, so it'll kind of go in, in a linear order if you're from one to 20, or you know, play once, repeat once, repeat all, kind of like your iPad or iPod. So take reset mode. Um, What's good is, is so the takes don't you know, go from one to five and then when you go somewhere else they go six to 10. You can actually do a reset mode um, and you can either set that to never, you set it to scene change, daily folder, or either scene or daily. Um, I would definitely do scene and daily um, so that it changes no matter what because you don't want you know, t starting at take five and the editor's like where's one through four. So I would definitely change that there. So scene increment mode, um, 
essentially it won't move. Your scene will stay the same um, for, uh, you know, as you, as you continue your takes, as you do different takes. Um, this is disabled. Um, obviously you can change it from character, scene one, two, three, four, five, or, or, numer or character or numeric. Um, however, this is disabled because generally you're on a scene for more than one take and so you don't want it to go up. So I leave this at disabled. So file max size, your clips will split if you go over four gigabytes. Now I find it very difficult that you're gonna go over four gigabytes on a, on a clip. Um, however, you can change it from 512 megabytes to four gigabytes. It will split seamlessly, so don't fear. Um, take designator, you can do T, you can do anything. It can be whatever number you want, but I like T because T, T take, sounds about right. Um, sound report info. So sound report is very important uh, because you can actually see um, some metadata just in case you know they want to they want to know or they want to contact you anything like that. Um, that is something that they can know, and you could do anything from tell them what the sample rate was, the frame rate, the bit depth, tone level, the roll comments that you had on it, anything like that. So again, it's just good for okay, what happened here? Let's see if there's a sound report to let us know. Folder options. You have three folder options that you can go into. So I like to do the job which we did MLB. I like to do the date, and then the bottom level is just the audio folder. You set it up that way so it's not all just one folder, so you can see a differentiation between client or job, date, and then just the audio files themselves. So we can jump out of there, file list. You can actually see your CF and your SD, and you can see the FAT32 versus XFAT. Uh, how much time you have uh, in the size of the card, and you can actually see the formatting as well, file system. So on the bottom here, you can see that it says options and takes. So you can actually jump into your options, create sound report, copy to CF, or any empty trash, erase or format. Um, the card itself, you could do it from there. You could just jump back here, and then takes, which we'll actually jump into in a hot second, but you can see what takes are on this menu, and you can go inside of the takes, and you can name them. Uh, not just name them, but you can actually uh, edit the individual takes after you've recorded them, which is actually fantastic just in case you make a spelling mistake or anything like that. Um, and then you can go back, you see your individual files. So you have that option. Now to go, oop, let me go back in here. So let's go into your take list. This was actually the menu we were just in, and this is a faster way to get to it. You actually have to do two steps to get to it from seeing the cards um, inside of the... Um, inside of the file list, but the take list is kind of the bottom of that. So you can see what your next one is right there. You can see what the ones you already have. And again, you can actually delete individual ones. You can name them individually. So this is kind of a way to, uh, to do that. Now, here's the only issue. To do this and to change the name right here, we're going to go in and change that to uh, something new, add a new entry. It's a little tough. Let, let's just do a little timing exercise right now. My name is Chris, so I'm gonna go ahead one, two, three, four, five, six. So, six, seven-ish seconds that I had to do instead of being able to type it out. Now I'm splitting hairs. But when you're in the field and it's kind of crazy and you're setting this stuff up, it would be nice to have a system just a, just a little bit easier, a little bit faster. But again, you could have the wingman um, to do it on your phone or you could have a keyboard. But again, I don't think you're gonna have a keyboard. Uh, next to you as being a sound man. So that actually makes up for all file storage right there. Now system. There's a couple of things down here um, that you really need to pay attention to. Other things are kind of negligible. So um, the system itself, slate mic is on. We'll keep that on for you to be able to kind of talk to uh, talk to it just like this. Keep that one on. Slate mic gain, you can set your gain, uh, obviously for the volume of it. Um, 36 dB was, was uh, what came with it, the default, and this sounds perfect, so I'm not gonna go any more than that. Slate and tone routing. So this is interesting because you can actually do slate, or you can do your tone for um, any individual channel as well, so not just the left and right. It does it for everything, and if you don't want it to do that, you can only do left or right, X1 or X2, so I think that's very, very cool. So you can actually change it for the slate, and you change it for the tone, which is, uh, which is very intuitive, uh, especially so if you, if you don't want them to hear, if you don't want the client to hear, you go uh, take one, blah, 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 blah. You can actually take them, take the X1 or the X2 out of there, but it'll still go on the left and right mix. We'll let the editor know that that's not a Tory slate. 
Tone level uh, is going to be obviously the, the volume of the tone. Um, tone frequency, 1000 hertz, um, that's just your 1K tone. That's, that's kind of the benchmark for setting it up in camera or whatever uh, recording device that you want to set it up in. Tone mode, you can either do continuous uh, or you can have, um, have the left on as an identifier to see if you're trying to troubleshoot to see if the channel is, uh, you know, if, you're, if a channel is problematic or not, you can turn on um, the left as, as a pulsing instead, but I have it on continuous. Uh, warning bell, um, warning bell, I have it on nice and low because I don't like to hear that blast in my ear, but you can set that up. Um, record start and stop bell, that kind of just goes boop in your ear, beep, kind of just lets you know, oh, recording, stop recording, boop, boop. So meter ballistics, um, what that means is when you peak, there's a little line that's actually going to go ahead and stay right there, right there to kind of tell you where you peaked at versus when you have the, uh, the VU only on, uh, it actually does not show the peaking at all. It doesn't show that little line up there showing you where you were at peaking level. Meter peak hold time, so again, it'll stay up there for one second, then it'll drop back down. One second's fine. Uh, meter display style, you could do segmented, you could do solid, that's just, that's just a preference to you if you want to see them little, little meters or if you want to do one solid bar. So track names in meter right there. All this system stuff is really a lot of preference stuff. You know, meter views, you can see all that stuff or just the left to right, one through three. Um, LED brightness, LCD brightness, this is kind of just time and date, uh, headphone encoder mode, headphone preset list. So this is all just a lot of housekeeping stuff here. So I'm actually going to kind of breeze by it here. Now USB port, you can set it up for the keyboard, USB host, wingman. If you have a wingman, you set the password up. Shortcut info, user guide, version info, update firmware. So that's really housekeeping stuff kind of at the end of that menu right there. And then the quick setup would be um, if you set all your settings and you really like them, or you're going onto a mixer that's not yours, you can actually save your settings to another one of these mixers, bring them in, boom, it'll load your settings up, uh, and you can go ahead and see it from there. So that is the Sound Device 633, uh, and it is a little mixer, but it packs a powerful punch. Um, it's lightweight, um, and you have internal uh, mixing, and you have a, a boatload of outputs and a boatload of inputs to use, so absolutely fantastic mixer, and we are happy to have it. So at IPGRentals.com, we want you to feel confident with the gear that you rent from us. Uh, so we are constantly updating our online repertoire of videos, tips and tricks to make your shoot go smoothly and professionally as possible. So like, comment, subscribe, and remember, it's our gear, it's your vision, IPGRentals.com.